Welcome to Artists at Work. My guest today is Steve Sens. Steve is a friend, he's a whiskey painter, he is a bicycle enthusiast, he's an abstract painter, he does metal point, and he is here today with the most incredible setup for plain air painting I have ever seen. You gotta have your cigar box rig. Can, tell, me, tell me what you did here, Steve. So what I did was, there's a cigar box by where I live in uh, North Royalton, mm -hmm. and they give away cigar boxes. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll go into the store and uh, pick up some cigars and some free cigar boxes. And I had this vision um, that I wanted to do a double decker. I was using cigar boxes for carrying my pencils around to the mm -hmm. various groups that I belong to, the West Side Markers, pretentious Cleveland portrait artists. And so I wanted to start bringing my paints with me. And I thought, well, hey, let's, uh, let's create a cigar box that's centered around watercolor. And um, so, this box has uh, some holes drilled in it where I looped a wire that holds my water cup. Uh, bicycle uh, water bottle holder so I can carry my water with me wherever I go. Um, and on the bottom here, I could flip up the bottom. I've got a place for a battery. I've got places for everything that I want to carry with me. Um, this palette is a core watercolor palette. It fits in here perfectly. It's like it was designed it for this It really does. Box. That's amazing. So then a little area for the uh, what drawing is the, utensils. What do you need the battery for? If I'm out in the field uh -huh. and my uh, battery's dying because it's cold, I just simply plug into my external battery pack and I can keep my phone charged. Oh, I love so this. So it's, it's, you know, it, it, these are born this. out of necessity, so yes. that means it's happened. Um, you also have a light feature? I've got a light feature, yes. Let me show you the light feature. This is a riot. So uh, a lot of the places, so the whiskey painters, uh, one of the things that they do is they'll go to bars. Yes, we and do. painting groups. Yes, we and do. And bars are not really all that well lit. Right. Um, same thing with the, Cleveland, the pretentious Cleveland portrait artists is we will paint in uh, bars. And so my first place to paint in there was Four City Brewery. Okay. It was so dark inside. So I had to come up with a solution. So what I did was, came up with a little under the cabinet light. Uh -huh, it's okay. charged by a USB. This is great. Hooked up some magnets and boom. So while I'm painting, I can look at my colors. And you it, get two colors. It puts off enough light so I can see what I'm doing. If we're painting in a hotel room somewhere, or if I go out on the balcony while we're on vacation. Right. And good I, lighting is so hard to come by. It's right. next to impossible to yeah. come by. So this kind of gives you that mobility and freedom that I like. This is probably the most ingenious setup I have ever seen. Thank you. And it's portable enough. It fits on your bike. It, this, like, this I'll usually keep in a backpack with me or I'll keep in the Jeep. When I go and take watercolors with me on the bike, mm -hmm. um, I didn't bring that rig with me, but it's a little, uh, it's a little tin. Yeah. And uh, it's got a couple half pans of watercolor, mm -hmm. a chopped up brush in there. And, and it, it's true to the whiskey painters. It fits right in your pocket. Right in your pocket. Yes. Is it the tin that we all get when we're accepted into whiskey painters? It's not that tin. Just like you said, yours is kind of sacred to you. Yeah. Mine's kind of sacred to me. I keep it clean. Yes. So I keep that one in a special yes. place. Um, this is just an old beat up Altoid tin. Gotcha. Love it. And, I love uh, it. You want to get started? I'm going to tell people a little bit about whiskey oh, sure. painters just in case they, they haven't heard it here before. Um, the whiskey painters were started uh, after the war in Akron, and there is a website called Whiskey Painters of America that will explain our rich and varied history. But basically what we do is we meet um, as often as we can, and we use watercolors, but instead of dipping our brush into water, we dip it into our little libation. <laughs> our alcohol content. Watercolor and whiskey, what can possibly go wrong? <laughs> it's a wonderful <laughs> life. It's got every, and we talk and we have a good time right. and we paint. Um, there are 150 whiskey painters in the world, in the group, and um, you need to have a sponsor, which I think is a hysterical word yes. for this, yes. to, to bring you into the group. And right. so, um, if you're interested in seeing whiskey painting, 
There is currently a show hanging at the Chagrin Valley Arts Center in Chagrin Falls. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful, and it hangs there until, uh, is it May 12th? May 12th. May 12th. May 12th. So I hope this airs in time for you to get to see it. If not, there's one in June in Vermont. So. Right. And yeah. It's fun with whiskey painting. Um, you think that because it's a small format, yes. you need to use a small brush. Yeah. I'm using a small brush just for this purpose, but generally I use a big brush for most everything. Um, this is just because of the angle and so right. forth. But you know, all I'm going to do is you know. My approach to all of this, I don't have a formula. Mm -hmm. I, I just refuse to have a formula. Yeah, go. I don't paint light to dark. I don't. I don't follow Do anything specifically. So, um, you know, in the in this case, what I'm going to do is just start. You know, just indicate just the tree there. Can I ask what kind of paper you're using there? This is a artesian watercolor, 300 Fabian. pound, yes. the best. So yeah. it's uh, it's a it's a cool paper. Uh, it, it it's got a lot of si it's got kind of a hard sizing to it. So which means I can lift um, the I can lift the uh, paint off of the paper really mm -hmm. easy, and um, you know it kind of helps uh, it, right. it helps give it another little dimension um, um, than paper that's that's stained. So what I'm doing is I'm just dipping my paint in the brush into the whiskey and. Uh, just trying to uh, when when I do paintings like this, you know, it, it's it's going to be like a five or ten minute painting. Sure. The mm -hmm. last thing I'm worried about really is capturing a, a likeness, a photographic type right. of likeness of right. what I'm doing. Right. And so, what I do is I, I want to capture more of a memory of a place, and uh, the memory of the place is is triggered by colors. And uh, so, while you're painting, I thought of one more thing I should share, and maybe you don't know this yet. Uh, whiskey painters will be having a show at Christmas in Hudson. Ooh, and that mm -hmm. is That's advanced news, hot off the press. So, the Hudson show is where yes I was visiting a whiskey show Yes, because I so badly wanted to become a whiskey painter. That was two years ago or three? I think it was two years ago. Yeah. And um, I had mentioned that to you because I, I was going to the shows and I wanted to just see what they were mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and you're a whiskey painter? I'm a whiskey and, painter, and, yes. And I think I just casually said, wow, this is something I just would love to be part of. And I said, and you said, "Hey, I'll sponsor you in." Yeah, because and why wouldn't I? Look at this beautiful work. Thank My you. Goodness. So My sponsor was the late Hillary Sheeter. Oh, no kidding. No kidding. Hillary I was, was so something else. honored. Well, I asked him. Oh my gosh, I want to say twelve years, fifteen years ago, and mm -hmm. he said. Sure, and then it took a long time because there were no openings. Oh, yeah. So, but I've been a whiskey painter for I would say maybe six or seven years, okay. or something like that. Yeah. Yes. No. Oh. And of course, Hillary is no longer with us. Right. But right. Yeah. So when I'm painting, uh, I'm, I'll use a different combination of water and whiskey. Mm -hmm. um, the whiskey, sometimes you could use that as a medium, mm -hmm. use it to your advantage for the traits that it that it possesses. Um, it has a tendency to dry very quick, mm -hmm. but also can be a very pushy type of uh, medium. And so, like for example in this, what I'll do is uh, I'm suggesting, I'm going to suggest a cloud in the background here. and. What I want to do is get uh, is get some whiskey on the brush, and it's pure whiskey at this point. I could touch it, it touch it on the wash, and it just pushes all it the other. It blooms a little. It blooms every it? Yeah. so. So that way, I'm kind of suggesting the softness, the lost and found edges of a cloud. Um, so this painting or this. Uh, this uh, picture was taken by a friend of mine, Jennifer, 
from work and she travels to Puerto Rico with her husband and this one was taken actually on an island that they rented out and I thought how cool is that uh, you're able to get on this, this, this island by yourself and, and, uh, and explore it mm -hmm. and they had these mangrove trees growing there and uh, so this looks like it's just a, 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 a mangrove like a, a young one mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's what, I, what captured me about this is it throws off these red shoots, so I'm guessing it's a red mangrove. And the red shoots are how it anchors into the ecosystem and it creates a habitat for all the little fishes and so forth to find uh, refuge in. I love this. So, um, yeah, to me it was kind of a cool thing. I love the depth you've already gotten there by shading uh, with your cloud in the background and the intensity of the blue at the top, we already have this perspective of depth that you made it look effortless. <laughs> and I'm sweating <laughs> over this one. So, it, but the, 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 with that though, the, the whiskey painters and the, all the groups that I'm in, it's about practice, but it's also about fun. You have to enjoy oh, yes. this. So when I'm painting a picture like this, I'm I'm trying to be there. Um, I have a hard time with the COVID thing going on and not being able to go to the figure drawing groups, West Side Markers yeah. on Mondays, the Pretentious Cleveland Portrait Artist on Fridays. Mm -hmm. I'm having a hard time dealing with that. You can mm -hmm. do all this virtual, mm -hmm. but I have a hard time drawing from the screen. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, there's a disconnect there. So what I've done over the winter is I've kind of turned inwards. So instead of drawing what's in front of me, I've kind of turned inwards and done more abstract work. Um, um, I'm gonna hold up a couple of these pieces that you brought. Um, these are not necessarily whiskey paintings, are they? Uh, not necessarily, but a lot of them are. No, oh. actually these ones here are not, they're, they're too big for our size. Yeah. That's an well, acrylic. It's Anyway, I'm gonna just um, hold this up you want to it's just an so, abstract internal so that is it, the neat thing with that one um, the neat thing with all of them actually and it's kind of a funny thing too is they can go any direction the viewer really feels comfortable with that's the direction I painted it in the direction you had mm -hmm. is the direction that my wife likes it she's she's like my She's my editor. <laughs> she tells me when something's okay and when it's not so good. And um, uh, the thing with it is, you know, it, it triggered, something in me was triggered uh, by this. And so when I, when I was painting it, I kind of go into a, a blank space. And what I'm doing is I'm just reacting to the shape. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm reacting to actually to four elements in art, and that's just line, texture, color, value. So those are the four things I'm really just embracing when I do this type of work. And I'm not thinking of a subject. I'm mm -hmm. not thinking of Hocking Hills. I'm not thinking of uh, being walking in the woods or a, an old barn. I'm, I'm just embracing working with color and moving it around. When I first saw this piece, I thought, this is Cleveland to me. Yeah. This is, I don't know what was going on in your mind when you were painting it, but I look at it and say. Probably all sorts of chaos. <laughs> now this is Cleveland, but this is also Cleveland. I mean, like yep. you say, you, they, they all work. Yes, so. I'm gonna make them crazy flipping this around the, too the fast. The viewers, when, when I sell a painting, an abstract painting, I, I kinda, mm -hmm. when I sign my work, I sign it in an inconspicuous area because I really don't know in the end what kind of framing they're gonna like or how they're gonna like to, to to uh -huh. um, orientate the work. So I just, I tell them, hang in any direction you choose. The signature is hidden in there. Right, and, it's a hidden. And that's cool by me because. Actually, I don't even see your signature here. When somebody purchases something, uh, it's because they have a feeling, they've gotten a, a response mm -hmm. to it, an emotional mm -hmm. response to it. And uh, uh, so, in keeping with their emotional response, I tell them, hey, if this reminds you of a landscape that you visited, or if you turn it 180 degrees and it reminds you of a waterfall. 
it's, it's your painting. It's, it's up to you. Exactly. So exactly. Yeah. I generally find a color that I like to explore, and then it builds from there. Or this shape. color combination here is just extraordinary to me. Thank you. Yeah. They're just vibrant and <laughs> what? We started well, laughing. So the colors in this, I love color. I love color. Um, that yellow is a discontinued pigment. You cannot find that yellow anymore. Oh. They don't manufacture anymore. Most of our colors come from the auto industry. If the auto industry right. deems a color not necessary right. or it's too hazardous to make, they'll or discontinue it. And the artists, we used a fraction of a percent of the colors right. made. Right. So that color is from Gura Paints and it's um, pigment yellow 153. And it's just a powerful, transparent, yeah. middle of the road yellow. Yeah. And it's finding a transparent yellow is, is next to impossible to find. It's a beautiful color, absolutely beautiful. So you can build blacks out of it. Yeah. Um, it's not so opaque where it muddies the blacks up. Right, right. So you can modif use it to modify yeah. temperatures and so forth. How so are we doing here? I don't know. I, I don't know. Are we happy? I'm just talking. Do you find when you're painting, you go through stages of this is going to be great, oh, this is horrible. Yes. Yes, oh my gosh, I think I nailed it. And then you come back and you like say. Like right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're in a, in a low point. I can tell by the way you're looking at well, it. Well, like you, <laughs> you know, it, it, I don't know. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it's fine. Um, I, I move my way through the painting and I look for things that I'm not trying to copy the scene per se, but just give the idea of, hey, wait a second, mm -hmm. this is water here. What can I do to, to show that this is um, uh, some kind of funky rock sticking out of the water? Um, and then, uh, and, and at the, all at the same time, try and keep some sort of unity in, in the whole painting uh, mm -hmm. so that, uh, it, it, it's somewhat representative of, of what's in front of me. Um, so I, 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 I try and picture that I'm there. What, is it, what, what does the water feel like? What, is it warm? Is it cold? Are you seeing the sand from the, 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 the beach below the water if you're, if you're in a real uh, hmm. shallow area? So, you know, and then I'll just, it's, it's, it's actually very impulsive for me. So the, the neat thing about doing these things too is that when I'm on a bike ride with my wife Trish mm -hmm. and we want to stop somewhere, you've got five, ten minutes to do something to kind of capture mm -hmm. uh, what triggers you from a scene. And so uh, that's the beauty of watercolor. You can, yeah. you, can, you can take a minimal amount of colors with mm -hmm. you, capture a scene, and then be on your way. And capture it and move on, but because you, you're not going back and retouching things much no. with watercolor. What you do is what you get. Right. So, so to me, I look at this and say, okay, you've got the flow of the trees, you've got the, how the, the sky integrates in there, a suggestion of the clouds. And the neat thing about a lot of uh, watercolor works or small works like this is then you put a frame, a, a mat around it, and then all of a sudden uh, it gives it a, a different context. Okay. It anchors it. It anchors it, it yeah. gives it a different context. And so what I'm going to do though is I'm going to let this sit for a little bit and dry so I'm not going to Because the paper will uh, absorb a lot of the paint. You, right. You need to just let it so With watercolors, sometimes mature. you just need to let them sit and do their thing. <laughs> and then, I, I'm sort of struck by how you go from very abstract and contemporary and you then do these incredible metal point um, I, we're going to show some on the screen, some of you, but tell yes. us a little bit about Metal Point so metal and your point, portrait work. So Metal Point, uh, what you do is, it, it, there's a, it's an old Renaissance technique, and um, what, what it is is drawing with a silver stylus. So this, in this case, I'm using uh, pure silver, uh, two different gauges of wire, a thicker one and a thinner one, and I'll have a uh, prepared piece of paper. In this case, this is called plique. So it's a synthetic paper. Because it's a synthetic paper, when I prepare it and put the gesso on there, it will mm -hmm. not buckle. Okay. So that's a pretty interesting thing. Like watercolor paper will buckle. It will definitely when, buckle. And it'll wet. get all wavy yeah. and so forth. And 
So this, this silver stylus um, on regular paper will not leave much of a mark, okay? No. Mm -mm. There's a little bit of a scuffy scribble there. However, when you do it on a prepared surface, Ah. it leaves a definitive mark. It's a subtle mark, it's a soft mark, but it's a definitive mark. And the interesting thing about metal point, in contrast mm -hmm. to the abstract works that I do, or even a representational watercolor that I might do, is the metal point allows me to explore a subject. So it's a different mindset. Mm -hmm. When I'm exploring a subject with metal point, I, I have it takes so much time to build values mm -hmm. um, because to color this in, it's not like charcoal where you can just smear it in ah. or watercolor where it's just a simple brush stroke. I actually have to sit here and labor a, a series of hatches and cross hatches to build up value in an area, okay? So that gives you a lot of time to explore your subject. Mm -hmm. You start looking at how things weave in and out. Um, how can I best represent that subject with some basic lines? And it's a very time-consuming process. It can be um, uh, worked in with uh, watercolor. You can do watercolor washes on this type of thing as well. You know, we'll just right, do a quickie. Right, right, right. So, you know, you can... So the, 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 point, the metal point will not smear. The metal point will not smear, and it took me forever. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I'd be doing these portrait drawings, and I would... I would go off the rails. What have I done to this poor person? <laughs> and so I'd have to figure out because I'm an hour into a drawing. Yeah, yeah. What do I do? At the end of the session, we give them the drawing so they, you and know, I don't want to give your name on it forever. I don't, I don't want to give them a train wreck. <laughs> so what I would have to do is start figuring out ways of correcting mistakes and I would scuff away the marks and, okay. and to try okay. and make adjustments and so forth until I found out that, shoot, I made a. Fi I was doing a process actually like this, and I had a fingerprint, an oily fingerprint on, and I put a water wash down, and so it beaded around my fingerprint, oh, and I'm like, oh boy, now what do I do? Here. Yeah. So I remembered uh, working in um, a wide format printing, and we would wipe down the boards with alcohol to remove the oil fingerprints so okay. that ink would stick. So I tried that on the board, and lo and behold, it took the silver off. I was like. Ah. I struggled all this time trying not to <laughs> make a mistake and trying to work with a botched up drawing and I could have just taken some uh, alcohol, alcohol and made it go away forever. And, and make it go away. <laughs> and so, you know, it, it's an it's ongoing process. You're never, you never know it all. There's always something to learn. We, we, we talked a little bit earlier and we said it's a dance. You're yes. in a dance with the paper and, yes. the, and the medium and the weather and you have to react. And, and that's, that's an excellent way to put that too because even with all of the materials and mediums that I like to work in from doing meticulous metal point to doing uh, looser uh, portraits, uh, this is Yusuf from Westside Markers. I started it with a watercolor pencil and then started bringing out the values and the tones using mm -hmm. a black and uh, uh, sepia color watercolor pencil. Mm. And Absolutely beautiful. I was trying to figure out how can I blend the two? How can I and, and so that's that's my journey. That's my dance with what I do. I I've think got, of you as like cross training in art. Yeah. You're a cross trainer. I'm you, absolutely a cross trainer. You, you you use all different mediums and you combine them and you go back and one enhances the other. And it it's an interesting thing because I love all of them. Uh, they're very, I, I, I resonate with all of them. So what I would, my goal is to be able to combine watercolor mm -hmm. and metal point. And the, the conflict I run into right now is that, you know, for a whiskey painter show, yeah. it's about watercolor. They're a watercolor right. group. Right. But if you're spending so much time on a drawing, so what's 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 the balance? How much paint? How much are you going to emphasize the paint and the color? I think you're going to make the rule up as we go along because no one else has done this. If you are using metal point and then you're whiskey painting, will the alcohol in the whiskey erase? Your it doesn't. Metal it, it doesn't. Oh it doesn't. So like the, the isopropyl alcohol uh, that I use to to erase them 
it's it's so concentrated compared okay. to what's in uh, what's in the the whiskey or right. the tequila or whatever whatever beverage I'm yes, using. Whatever it is, and uh, you know, it's it's a fun thing to explore. I, I love it. I and uh, I look forward to to seeing what you do next to combine all this together. You know, and it, it's a fun thing. Um, you know, even coming on the show, coming on this yeah. it, when you invited me, yeah. it wasn't a vanity thing. It was no. to embrace uh, art. It, the communities that I'm involved with are so awesome. Mention this West Side Markers. So West Side Markers is the figure drawing group. It's headed up by Jeff Erty. They uh, meet. They used to meet Mondays, Monday evenings at uh, at uh, six thirty, and um, at uh, uh, oh, what is the name of that gallery in Cleveland? Uh, It'll come and to they me. They met in Cleveland, in the West Side somewhere, I yeah, take I'm, it. I'm having a block on the building that And then this in. other group, the Pretentious. The Pretentious Cleveland Portrait Artists, we meet everywhere. Any place that'll hold us, we'll meet you there. We've been, at, we've been at several bars, uh, and it's uh, a, a sitter will sit for us, and in mm -hmm. exchange for the time of them sitting with us, we'll give them the portraits sure. that we came up with, sure. so there's no money exchanged. Right. Um, uh, the Crooked River Gang. The where Crooked I met River you. Gang. We are going to hang a new show at Laurel Lake. Excellent. In Hudson in June. Excellent. We Looking have the COVID Protocol Committee approving it, mm -hmm. and so the Crooked River Gang always painted in the Cuyahoga uh, Valley right. and displayed at the MD Garage. And we lost our home down there, but we still paint. We all still paint. We still paint. We, we took it on the road. And so many of the whiskey painters that I know are part of that group mm -hmm. and, and the whiskey painter group. What a social group. What a great group. I know. Meeting at a bar to just paint? Come on. How cool is that? We're the best. So Here's to us, Steve. Here's to us. Here's to us. Come and look at our paintings. Yes. And, and when we get to be together in public again, we'll let you know. Absolutely. And come watch us. Cheers. Our fellow Americans. Right now, the COVID-19 vaccines are available to millions of Americans. And soon, they will be available to everyone. The science is clear. These vaccines will protect you and those you love from this dangerous and deadly disease. They could save your life. So we urge you to get vaccinated when it's available to you. That's the first step to ending the pandemic and moving our country forward. It's up to you.